I've learned that when you have money, you think that you could solve problems. But you see, the humility is just because you got an anointing to make money doesn't mean you have an anointing to do brain surgery. And it takes time for some people to realize you can't solve the problems in America just because you got money. Oh, we should do this. We should. But well, that worked in your in your sphere. But your sphere isn't 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 this thing. So I I have to teach them. The, if you want to if you want to change America or if you want to win the battle, you're going to have to take a look at. Fifty percent of the problem is solved if it's properly defined. So even in your business, we have a habit in my organization. I work with Mercedes Spark. She's the the young business partner, and and we're adding to our team a new CEO right now. And uh, because here's what we found out that uh, we have to stop every now and then and say, what's the problem we're solving for? Because sometimes if you don't define the problem properly, you come up with an elegant solution to the wrong problem. So, uh, so we, what is the problem we're solving for? And then you go back and realize you got on a rabbit trail. That wasn't, that really isn't the problem. So it takes a lot of energy to get to what the problem is. But once you get the problem properly defined, it's half solved. So what's happening in the United States is here we got this flag up here. I would say that uh, we have not understood the Great Commission is to go make disciples of nations. Now, we weren't taught really practically making disciples of nations, nor do we have a theology that embraces nations as an outcome. We believe God will give us souls in every nation. We don't really think of nations. I suggest to you that nations are a higher priority to God than they are to the church, and that's a gap we need to fix because he's not taking us out until we've done what we have to do in the nations. This gospel of the kingdom should be preached in all the world or all the nations. So we're, we ain't going until we've done our primary assignment. And it's, and it's a, the gospel of the kingdom, curiously enough, goes to kings. It goes to the rulers. Most of us are kind of like, you know, blessed if you get a chance to have to talk to someone who is in high power. But the fact is, they're the target audience for the church. The poor, I used to think, was the essence of the kingdom. Because they, you know, the poor will hear you gladly where the rich people snub you. I get that. But the reality is the Apostle Paul, his calling, go, Ananias was told, anoint this man, for he's a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Jews, the Gentiles, and their kings. Three groups, Jews, Gentiles, kings. One third of Paul's job description was to testify to kings. Why? Because God's dealing with nation states becomes, in a sense, the clock gets punched the moment the proclamation is made to the rulers. From that moment on, they have responsibility for what they've decided to do with the message of the apostle. You're an ambassador giving terms of blessing or war to a world ruler. They, you don't have to position it that way, but you might as well know what your job is. How they respond to you actually determines how God's going to respond to their empire. So uh, nations are all getting a last day's uh, last call. They get a last shot. There is so much more waiting for you over at LanceWaldale.com forward slash podcast. This was only an excerpt. This isn't the whole episode. There's so much over there. Be sure you go check it out. LanceWaldale.com forward slash podcast. See you over there.